For Saudis, this might not be new news. But for most of the world, this is the story about Saudi women that is never told. When I was in the U.S. and I had to explain every time I go to Epcot that Saudi Arabia is not just camels and a desert. <laughs> right. We are progressive. We're normal people, just like any other country. Found you guys. Everybody thinks that we're too um, close-minded. We there is no progression in the country at all, and we have oil tanks sitting in our homes. <laughs> But it's not the case at all. Right. <laughs> this is a liberal perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And I wanted to get the story on the, you know, That's to balance right. it out. Yeah, yeah. But it's impossible to get there. Yeah. yeah. It's just not going to happen getting <laughs> the camera in there. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. <laughs> Good luck. So just to be fair, there are many narratives here. Mm. But is this the majority narrative? No. This is no. the minority. This Definitely is the minority. minority. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, ten percent think like you, maybe. Uh, um, I can't, I can't, I around, can't really say. Around Saudi, probably, yeah. yeah. Around, but what about in Jeddah? No, Jeddah, I would say 50. Yeah. 50. Jeddah, Jeddah would have a higher rate compared to other regions, probably Jeddah and Eastern region. There's I think that's what makes Jeddah the most progressive and uh, right. most liberal one because it's a melting pot of so many different cultures here because of Mecca and Medina. A lot of people from all around the world, all the Muslims from all around the world, pass by Jeddah. It's the gateway when they go for pilgrimage and a lot of them uh, stay back yep. and live here and have the next generations here and that I think that makes a, a huge impact on how progressive and liberal this part of the country is. Yeah, Jeddah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like everything just flipped all of a sudden like especially the driving thing. Yeah. Like it, we've heard of that from like 10 years ago like oh women are going to drive women are yeah more than 10 years they keep saying that but it never happened and then like out of nowhere unexpected okay you're allowed to drive or like what? So you didn't know it was coming it just flipped no. one day. Everything one flipped one day. Everything. Everyone flipped the one concerts day. Concerts yeah. suddenly yeah. flipped in Saudi one tourism, cinema, cinema, Saudi tourism, everything. everything. So cinema was not allowed. No. no. When did that change? Uh, last year. year. Last year. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So everything happened at once, which is great. Yeah. But then with this rate, nobody knows what's yeah, next. We don't know what's next. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, are these anxious times, would you say? No. Or are they exciting, exciting. times? It's exciting times, right? Yeah. Anywhere else, we have the same problems. Yeah. Exactly. I don't have time to juggle between my job and my kids. It's the number one epidemic globally. You're an entrepreneur? Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. What are you doing? I do a gift registration platform, so uh -huh. uh, for gifts. Weddings, babies, birthdays, and graduations. There isn't any online registries in Saudi, so first mover advantage. And weddings are a massive Huge. deal. Yeah. Huge, the biggest uh, profitable <laughs> in Saudi. I'm saying that I don't. I want the world to know that we're not evil or, or strictly religious or not open to change. Mm -hmm. I want people to know that we do have great education, uh, an amazing community, and great society. Mm -hmm. and so there's no anti-American vibe here. No, not at all. Anti-European. No, not at all. No, that would be ridiculous. But you're yeah. not super ultra conservative. No, I'm not. I'm so not. Someone that is perhaps. The Western values I don't values. think so still no no not to the individuals themselves not to the citizens or right. maybe po politics yes but uh, individuals themselves no not really what do you think the West could learn from here mm. family values I don't know uh, we're a very very uh, family oriented community to the fact that uh, a lot of the houses we live with our grandparents still uh, we visit our family two or three times a week and uh, we do care about the decisions, <laughs> honestly, and their opinions, I mean, not decisions. Vibes co-working space here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And what is very cool about here is something 
completely unexpected, at least to me, which is a happening female entrepreneur scene. A lot of people would think that there's not a lot of female entrepreneurs here. However, technically we're ruling. You're uh, ruling. We're ruling, yes. Because by the end of the day, females, as they might say, if you, if you educate a female, you're educating a whole community. So there's a lot of female entrepreneurs here. And if you want, I can introduce you to a couple. Do you find yourself having to explain Saudi, say when you're in the U.S. or in Europe, do you have to explain it at all? Sometimes, yes, because not a lot of people are educated, which I don't I don't blame them about that, Right. Uh, with media and everything, uh, but a lot of times I have to explain to them that it's a bit different, we don't, we're not as, whatever Hollywood showed you, we're totally different than that. Right. Not all of us think that way, so it's, it's, it's very different. Uh, the same thing with the U.S., a lot of people, mm -hmm. for example, when they see the president, they think everyone is like, wow. But it's uh, yeah, really? so yeah, so that's why that, like a lot of people should not judge by what they see in the media because it's totally different than going there or speaking someone speaking to someone that is there. The local banks are currently working together to create boot camps for either female entrepreneurs or any type of entrepreneur to kind of help them start their idea, help them with funding it, and helping them with everything like that. So the support wise, there's always support guaranteed on that. So. For example, Loud. Loud is a design firm that is completely run by a female entrepreneur. This business? Yes. Can we take a look? Sure. I think the CEO just passed by. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hi. Go back. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, this too. This is your business? Yes, it is. Okay, what do you do exactly? So we're a graphic design firm. We do everything graphic design related. Um, social media, photography, videography, branding, corporate identities, mm -hmm. um, campaigns, social media campaigns, website designs, developments, etc. All females? All females, yeah. And you're the, you're the I'm CEO? I'm the uh, co-founder, yeah. Co-founder, okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. How's it going so far? It's going great. It's been over a year now. So... The toughest part. Yeah, yeah. You got through the year. Yes. And we're actually expanding. We started uh, at a sm in the smaller office downstairs, and then mm -hmm. we upgraded up here. What's behind the decisions to have only females working in your company? Honestly, um, we are a team of feminists. Okay. <laughs> Positive feminists. So um, we just wanted to like basically con not contradict the the norm, but to contradict the norm. Women, especially in our society and everything, are, are known to be as you know submissive, and we do. I mean, we'll always have some sort of male figure, but we kind of wanted to just go against that and prove a different point. So we never noticed that we don't have an actual like something or a symbol that we can wear that represents us as Muslims or represents us as uh, as Arabs in general. Mm -hmm. uh, something like the cross or something for, like, that's yeah. that's an example. So what they did is they basically took different religious aspects from our culture or different culture things and they turned it into jewelry so people could wear. Hi, Sarah. Nice Sarah, to meet you. You too. Sarah, what are you working on? So my company is called Azha Workshop, and basically we create uh, jewelry that's inspired by culture, Arabic, and spirituality. It's basically a sound wave of an uh, of a Quranic verse that's meant for protection of loved ones. Uh, Lamise here, that's doing uh, marketing. He's helping us with uh, social media and strategies. We have Zahra as well. She's helping us with supply chain <coughs> and vendor management. <laughs> We started actually in Canada and moved back to Saudi because we had a bigger client base here. People here spend more in terms of accessories and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and things that they like in terms of the culture and spiritual aspect than people do in North America. So your employees here took a little risk because yes. they didn't go the traditional route. Yes. They didn't get a government job or work for a bank or something. Yeah. They believed in you. They believed in me. They believed in Ezra. They believed in uh, themselves that they can actually help and and make this become a, a bigger thing that it is all, already is, yeah. I just got emotional. <laughs> so, we have, so what do we have here? So we have Lab of the Care, which is a skincare company. It's run fully by a lovely Saudi woman, oh. whose background is legal, by the way. She's a lawyer, so Hi. we will leave it up to her. Hello. Hello. So you were a lawyer, but now you have a skincare Yes, line. that's true, yes. So what is this all about? Well, it's an authentically organic and natural skincare. It's not common, I would say. Most people blindly put whatever on yes. their skin, including yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. I put sunscreen, yeah. that whatever sunscreen they can yeah. find. And that's the problem. It's, it's honestly in the long run that you see those effects. It's not something that happens instantly. 
but it's in the long run where you find yourself um, getting these um, other Compounded effects, yes. right? Yes. Like, like everything with health. Yeah. My passion it for aromatherapy started at a younger age, and I thought now is the time. Now is the time to start the body care. So is that's it scary it going from your say predictable career to? Well, it comes with every entrepreneur. That's one of the conditions, I guess. So yes, that's the jump I took. meditating because when you're praying and you're saying the Quran verses you're you you're going to this weird state that you feel just so calm and that even if you're very angry or if you're very upset it really helps you to is it, is it tone down anxiety yes it does because most of the time when you're stressed sometimes just taking a deep breath and, and connecting to God really helps my first tech web developer and I just dropped out of college you just dropped out of college. Yeah. To go full time into Renault. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. That's a true startup story. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping it real. We were just talking about it the other day. We have 50% of our startups, of like our 10 startups, which are either co founded or founded by women. You know? And that's an amazing thing. In that's not normal. You'd think that, but actually in the Middle East, um, there is more funding that's available to tech startups that are run by women um, as in a, in a global percentage as opposed to the rest of the world and there are more tech female founders um, like higher percentage than the rest of the world which is a very interesting statistics because so I think a lot of things is basically like a lot of the younger generation they are becoming more empowered and for them it is a desire to prove themselves right it's really inspiring that everyone now is like looking for uh, their own business and they want to, to create uh, their own brands or something something they're passionate about it's even more better it's, it's more freedom it's like they can do their own thing without any like uh, cultural uh, limits or governmental limits or anything they're all supportive uh, supporting this uh, this matter uh, I hope so that I have clients all over the world that's my target actually like, people are connecting a lot of problem with co-working working spaces is People are in their own yeah. zone, and you guys really do a good job bringing it together. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've been, I've been vibed. You've been vibed. I've been vibed. <laughs> it's a verb. The verb, yes. Thank you. Thank you.